Log Talk Radio. Welcome to the Pastors and Leadership Conference 2022, where leaders and clergy will be impacted through information provided by our speakers. Our guest orators include Pastor and Reverend William Givens of Buckhead Church in Atlanta, Georgia, Nurse Practitioner, CEO, and Pastor Dr. Tina M. Baxter, and Radio and TV host, Motivational Speaker, and Pastor. Dr. Angela Butts Chester. Now let's join the conference with our host, Pastor Diane Winbush. And good evening, and thank everyone for tuning in to our Pastors and Leadership Conference 2022. And so, our purpose for this um, event is very essential for uh, clergy leaders, ministers, evangelists, or whatever uh, field that you perhaps maybe occupy in the Christian sector. Um, it's very, very important. So many times we um, take the, the the horse on the other end. We need training. We need teaching. And also we need to collaborate with one another in order to learn more and more about our surroundings and our environment. So um, this afternoon we're going to um, go ahead and get started, and we're going to open up the floor, and we're going to allow our uh, guest speakers to be able to introduce themselves, to be able to share a little bit about them and their career as to uh, their ministry um, in regards to the audience. So first we're going to get started with Pastor Givens, and uh, good afternoon, Pastor Givens, and you can go ahead and share a little bit about you and what you do uh, in regards to your ministry. Yes, good afternoon. Again, thank you for uh, having me here today. It is an honor and a privilege to, to be a part of the Pastors and Leaders Conference 2022. Um, I uh, serve as both pastor and prophet there at Buckhead Life Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's a revitalization project that um, the Lord and the community has given me the honor to uh, to, to lead and, and one in which I'm excited about. Um, I I like to even say before that I'm a, I'm a husband and a father uh, of four mm-hmm. kids, and um, that that is that is my uh, my leading and guiding force. The the wife the Lord has blessed me with, and the children that He's entrusted with me with to um, to raise and and to um, to to lead to Him and and uh, to further the kingdom in that way. Um, it's because of those that um, that I do what what the Lord has called me to do, and so I'm I'm thankful for them. Um, and, uh, for us at Buckhead Life, you know, it's, it's been a part, of, it's been about, particularly as it relates to, um, revitalization and all of that good stuff, being in the community and, uh, making an impact there and being, um, being, um, a church revitalizer, if you will. There, it's been important to to be out in the community and um, and be honored in that way. And so, doing things like helping with the homeless and uh, prison ministry and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a few things that the Lord has led us to do, and however He leads in that, we we participate in. And so, that's that's us. And that's uh, just me. Okay, great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Pastor Angelo. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Diane, for uh, Pastor Diane, for for inviting me to this Pastors and Leadership Conference for 2022. Uh, what an honor to be able to help your listeners and everyone start their year off on the right foot. Amen. I tell you, we we really need uh, some enlightenment as an encouragement as we start um, coming out of such a hectic uh, previous few years. Now, a little bit about me. And thank you for that. Um, Daily Spark with Dr. Angela is radio. Daily Spark TV is TV. I absolutely love what I do, and I am so blessed to be able to do it. Um, I am a pastoral counselor by education. Uh, I started off with a very humble podcast uh, in my bedroom, and I prayed a simple prayer. Lord, I would love to be on the radio. I think that I have uh, so much more that I could share. Fast forward five years from that prayer, and I was blessed with a call, and I say it with air quotes, out of nowhere, which we know that that was just um, an answer to a prayer. I started with radio uh, weekly, though my show was called Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I was asked, are you sure? 
that's what you want to name the show? I said, that's the name the Lord gave me. That's what I'm going with. Um, and and that is that is what I stuck to. And she said, well, okay, that's, that's what we'll call it. Uh, fast forward a year, I had the opportunity to go from weekly to daily. Fast forward some more and zip on through that ye- those years. It went from weekly in one location to now I am on Monday through Saturday uh, nationwide mm-hmm. on both terrestrial radio and online. TV is a beautiful thing. Same thing. I'm on a, a Christian network, and I'm able to spend time with um, not only ministry leaders, but with authors as well. And the one question that I always ask is, how has your faith made you the person that you are today? So in encouraging others and in letting others know that they can do and be whatever God has called them to do, that they can walk in that purpose is a is a beautiful thing. As I say, enlighten, inspire, and empower. And I'm so happy that we will be able to do that very thing today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, Pastor uh, Baxter has not chimed in as of yet in the studio, so we're still going to continue to move forward uh, with the uh, with the conference. Um, as I stated before, I think this is very, very essential that leaders can be able to grasp information from you guys that you are providing on di- in different uh, states. Uh, I think uh, uh, one is from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Pastor Givens, as well as you are from California, um, if I read your information correctly, uh, uh, Pastor Angela. And so this is so awesome. This can be able to give different audiences because our, our broadcast is international. So it can be able to give individuals on a different perspective as to their location and how they can be able to cope with the topics that we're talking about. So we have three different components that we're going to be sharing with the audience on this afternoon, and one is being a pastor in your community, health initiatives, which is very, very important. I mean, that's something that I I don't uh, understand as of yet as to how people are shaking the church, but we have uh, buildings where we can be able to uh, train and teach them through health fairs and different other medical professionals that can be able to come out to the church. And so last but not least, we're going to be talking about relationships and marriages. So we're going to get started with the community, which is very, very important uh, as far as a pastor is concerned. So we're going to start with Pastor Givens. Pastor Givens, we want you to be able to share with the audience of how effective that it can be for the leaders to be able to, because we're trying to go beyond the pews. Ministry is not just in the pews, it's beyond the pews. You know, Jesus got out of the boat, he went from town to town, city to city, country to country. Sometimes he had to walk on his bare feet, and then sometimes he uh, was also in a ship or a boat. So uh, share with us a little bit how effective that would be for um, leaders to be effective in their community, uh, Pastor Gibbons. Um, yes, I um, I think that uh, being effective in uh, in the community is 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 at the top of the list there. And now I think that that plays out differently from uh, community to community. And so I do think it's vitally important for us to be in tune with the community that uh, that the Lord sends us to as individuals. You know, I was reading in uh, in John ten earlier this uh, week in the scripture is a pretty interesting thing. The scripture says uh, that uh, uh, in in verses one through three, it says, uh, I'm telling you the truth and I'm paraphrasing here. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, The one that enters into the sheepfold, but doesn't come by way of the door is a thief and a robber. And he says, but he that comes (laughs) in by the door uh, is the shepherd of the sheep. And so the Lord said mm-hmm. one thing there, we ought to know and be uh, be aware that thieves and robbers have to come some other way than through the front door. And so being aware of that. But then in verse 3, it says, uh, to him, the, the sheep, the shepherd of the sheep, the porter opens the door, and the sheep hear their voice. They, he calls them by name, and he leads them out. And so mm-hmm. um, I, I think it's important for us to know first, as we're dealing with community and we're you know, pastors, leaders, in, in whatever capacity, the the, the porter is the one deciding who is the shepherd of the sheep. And so it's important, number one, before we get to talking about community, to to mm-hmm. follow the Lord's leading to the community that he called us to. 
making sure we're mm-hmm. in that right place. And so that's that's the first thing there. But then but then once we get to that place of, of being in the community that he's he's called us to, getting to know that community, the scripture says the sheep uh, are gonna know the voice of the, their shepherd. And so it's important for right. us to be in that community, live in the community, talk to the people in the community, be be mm-hmm. in the dirt, if you will, with the people in the community so that when mm-hmm. we we have something to say from the Lord they recognize our voice because we've been there and we've been around the people and um, and 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 a part of that too is knowing and being aware of the needs of 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 your particular community whatever they are and and then responding to those needs as the Lord leads and so that you know when people know that when things get tough hey I can go to my pastor I can go to this leader because they know what was going on I had this time of need and they showed up and so being being present uh, uh, in the community, responding to the needs of that particular community, um, I, I think that is where, where we make the, the, the big impact. I think huge in that, though, is getting to the community that the Lord called uh, called us to, and I think that's, uh, okay. that's very important there. Um, and, and one more thing I want to say about that, I think – uh, for for me, you know, uh, I'm in an interesting region. It's a good one, but an interesting one nonetheless. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you, you spend time in the work of the Lord, and you're doing His work, and you're doing His work, and you're doing His work. And sometimes, if we're honest, it feels like we're not making the kind of progress that uh, we envision. And uh, and and mm-hmm. I believe one of the reasons for that, the Bible says that the Lord knows the end from the beginning. And I believe sometimes right. when we're praying through things, He shows shows us what the end is and we see that and we get excited about it and then we get a little but then we get a little discouraged when other people aren't as excited about it as we are but it's because we saw the end from the beginning and they hadn't seen that yet but we got to be patient to get them there and so I think it's important during those times of getting to that end place that end result that we've seen that we continue to do the right thing in the right direction I, I've said it before I've said it a lot actually mm-hmm. if we'll if we'll do mm-hmm. that same right thing in mm-hmm. the same right direction long enough it'll begin to it'll begin to pay off and pay dividends we'll begin to see the results of of what we've been doing over and over and up. you on. know abraham's walk with the lord was it took a little while but the end yep. was glorious you know and you take all those patriarchs yes. of the faith and and it it the lord showed them something they stepped out on it got a little difficult but they stuck with it and it was glorious at the end and so keep doing that same right thing in the right direction mm. long enough mm. people will begin to see it and it'll begin to pay off and so yes. wow wow <laughs> that is so that's that's awesome because uh there, it was something unique that you said to the to the right community to the right community because you know as i mentioned to uh individuals sometimes and stuff everybody has a different assignment just think about it if all of us yes. were, were pastors or all of us were evangelists or all of us were ministers or all of us were teachers we all have different assignments and sometimes other people may want to join in oh i like what dr angela or pastor angela is doing and things so i'm going to go in there and i'm going to clip out a few little snippets off of what she's doing but that's not the assignment that god has uh, um, right. on the next leader too, and so that is very, very unique. Uh, you know, as to what you said, what what type of com- community have you been called to? So we're going to get Doctor and Pastor Anna Angela from her perspective in her state in her geographic location to be able to also respond on that same topic is the importance of us being um, uh, more effective in our communities. And and another reason why I brought that question up is very, very important because a lot of times we as church people, we assume a lot of things, but we don't get the learning and education that's right out there with with us. And so as I explained to some individuals, I do prison reform ministry as well, which is very, very important to me because a lot of times, uh, you know, we have so many that's incarcerated in the United States. Not going to get off the topic, but I'm just trying to make a point that sometimes our own mm-hmm. African American men and sometimes other uh, 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 ethnic backgrounds they don't know the law. They don't even know who their aldermen right. are. They don't even know who the mayor is. They don't know anybody right. because we have not taught them. We feel that something and, and and Jesus came with the scriptures, but he came with the beatitudes. He taught us wisdom. He taught us knowledge. There is no way that our ministry. Should to be off course because he came down and made a very perfect, perfect example. So go ahead, Dr. Uh, uh, Pastor mm-hmm. Angela. 
No, you were making some really great points, Dr. Um, Pastor Diane. I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt there. Um, mm-hmm. And as did uh, uh, Pastor William, he made some great points as well. So the, the way, one way that I believe that you can look at it as well is what have you been called to do as a pastor or as a ministry leader? And without getting into all of the things that we've been taught, we understand mm-hmm. that we are a servant first that we should be honest, that we should uh, love our fellow citizens as Christ loves us. We know that we should be a person of integrity, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we should also make sure that we are listening, that we are showing up, and that we are being involved in Mm -hmm. the said community. For a lot of pastors, they may live in one num- in one neighborhood, but their church is actually in a different neighborhood. If that applies to you, wow. then you need to be involved in both neighborhoods. So you need mm. to know what's going on in the lives of the people that make up your parish, that make up your congregation. But you also need to learn to be an advocate and a voice for the neighborhood in which you live because you- the neighborhood in which you live is also having an effect on who you are as an individual person. So why is it important that we not only listen, show up, and be involved, but make sure that we're holding true to the attributes of what it means to be a call to ministry? And I think it ties into what you were saying. Many uh, young children of color do not have that role model or that additional role model to which they can look. Perhaps mom or grandmother or dad or uncle or grandfather, they're doing the best they can, but there could be better. And maybe you as a mother of the church, a grandmother of the church, the pastor, the wife of, or whomever, could be that additional resource that they have in their lives. So seeing someone who is a servant first, right, seeing your pastor getting out there and handing out dinners when it's Christmas and Thanksgiving and not just standing on the sideline, Uh, seeing Mm -hmm. someone being honest in a moment when perhaps they got caught up uh, in in a situation, but they've come forward, not anything major or anything like that, but just they said mm-hmm. something that could have been misconstrued or a little out of pocket. But being honest and saying, I'm sorry, I let my emotion get to me, let me step back and apologize. Or, or that sense of love mm-hmm. and just understanding that though you may not be my child by blood, you are my child by faith. Um, and understanding mm-hmm. that being a person of integrity and how important that actually is. So no matter where you are um, a, a member of the said community, be it that you in the hood or you have made it to, you know, the, the mansion up on the hill, you still need to be mm-hmm. ever present. And I think that you need to be able to be utilized in your within your uh, community. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Because as I as I mentioned, you know, um, you know, on both sides of it, we're supposed to obey the laws of the land, and of course, with the laws of the land, there is, according to the court judicial system, there is no um, excuse for ignorance, and so does it states in the Book of Numbers and the Book of Leviticus. So, you know, we cannot always just make up excuses. We have to be able to get involved. We have to train and teach our people. You know, I didn't understand this in the beginning when I first. Uh, you know, was going to church when I was little. You know, it was just something that was taught as a child and what have you. But then when I uh, developed a little bit um, down the road and got into another type of of, of um, uh, ministry and denomination, I learned better. And then further on, I was able to even learn even greater. We are the community. We're not just leaders, just just to people in the pews, but we're leaders. You know, he told us to take dominion over. We have dominion. He gave it to us. He gave us the dominion over the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, and that goes even for on fresh ground, fresh soil as well. And so once we know where we belong, as what Pastor Gibbons was saying and, and things, what 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 uh, community are you assigned to? What community are you called to? You know, and so that's very very important. Um, you know, in regards to making sure our people, you know, and I'm I'm going to say something else. You, you know, I think that it should be a decrease when it comes to juvenile issues. You know, things should be taught. You know, Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible in the Book of Daniel, he had everything up under his portal. 
Come on here. He had a hotel. You could go there and get your taxes done. You could get anything from, from his type of standpoint as a leader, and that's the way the church is supposed to be. We shouldn't be running to divorce court. There should be counselors. Come on out of here. Mm-hmm. There's supposed to be counselors mm-hmm. in the church set up where they can be able to get and ascertain the information that they need to be able to salvage or to be able to um, – perhaps maybe put back together their marriage or their relationship, people should not have to go on the outside of the church because God puts us here as very constructive leaders. Now I'm finna, the Holy Spirit is going to come up and I'm going to get on the next subject. So, and you know, you know so, I, if, if, I ahead, could, if I could make a comment there, uh, sure. Pastor Diane, and, and you know, you, you are saying a mouthful, and I think that people need to really, really listen and take heed to what you have said there. Um, I remember there was a time where we would qualify uh, to whom we were we were searching, we would say, "I am looking for a Christian long service. I am looking for a Christian painter." We would say that that is who we were looking for. Today, I think that many people have stepped away from that because they don't want to be criticized. They don't want to be seen in the light of being discriminatory in any way. But yet, we mm-hmm. do have these criteria that we're looking for, and if if we're willing to say it out loud and say, "Not that there's." anything wrong with the secular business but if I can support someone who also agrees with my faith if I can elect someone who is also Mm -hmm. a member of my faith then we are Mm -hmm. all being kingdom minded and we are all kingdom builders so I think what you're saying is is absolutely important Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely can I chime in for a quick second there too Uh, I'm kind of in the same vein or before we move on (laughs) Before we move on to the next point, I, I think as um, as we're we're working in the particular communities that we find ourselves in, uh, another thing is Scripture says, and, and I read King James, uh, um, and so what it says in that uh, Moses, <laughs> yes, indeed, Moses was was Godward on behalf of the people, and so I, I also think that it's important for us to, uh, as 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 pastors and ministers and leaders to in the in the midst of the grind to not forget that our responsibility is to continually go back and forth between God and the people. We we continue our 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 search towards God, our intimate time with God, and it's like and and that includes for us now. So it's it's like a twofold thing here too. And so I'm not only going before God to to hear on behalf of the people, although that's initially what I started out saying. That's that's a big huge component of it. But that I have to also find space and time in my life, in my day, in my schedule, in my marriage and with my family to make sure that I am personally William Givens spending time with God and allowing God to feed me and God to nourish me and God to lift me up. Uh, and I think if we if we neglect that it, it, it hampers our effectiveness to some degree. When uh, in the book of Acts, when the people, when the when the when the widows were being neglected, they came to the apostles, and the apostle, apostle says, "You you men and women, you pick some people of faith to get this job done. We have to make sure that we're continually going back and forth between back to God, so that we'll have something mm-hmm. when it's time to to come before you and to serve you. And so as mm-hmm. as as ministry um, leaders, it's important for us to to um, continue to go back to God to make sure that we're feeding the people after a godly sort versus, you know, uh, how we're feeling on that particular day or out of our exhaustion or anything like that. It's 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 mm-hmm. back at his house, at God's house, that we ourselves get nourished so that we can do the work that it, that God has called us to do in the community that he's called us to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So um, the next uh, portion of this, still talking in regards to, uh, we're going to uh, uh, shift gears to in regards to the COVID. So on a, a previous uh, pastors and leadership conference that um, I heard um, and I was listening to, and it was under uh, the leadership of Pastor T.D. Jakes. 
Okay, and so there was a prophet that came. I think it, it was the one that comes all the time. They're very good friends from Zimbabwe, Africa, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, this is going to his uh, what he had prophesied is going to tie into the next uh, series of what we're going to be talking about, and that's in regards to the COVID. So he ministered um, at this at the conference, uh, this particular conference. Uh, I think it was 2012 that that uh, the United States would have lost. You know, and I don't get it. I, I mean, you know, that's the first calling that I had before I even became a pastor is a prophet, prophetess, and still am a prophetess, okay? And so um, he, he mentioned that 30% of the pastors would have been diluted in the United States within 10 years. Sure. So we're here in the 10 year frame right now. So my thing was uh, when it when I thought about it and when I thought about the Omicron and I thought about the Delta uh, variant and all of these things and I, I feel that a lot of pastors have panicked. I, I feel I feel that there's less trust that they may have in God and then sometimes I feel that God will allow some things to happen just to test us to see how strong that we are. And so I want us to talk about that a little bit in regards to the Omicron. How are we supposed to be unshakable? This is an unshakable thing. We don't we don't allow things to, uh, uh, you know, as pastors and leaders, you know, well, since we got the Omicron, uh, you know, variant that's going on, you know, you have to make precautions. You have to take, well, we have to take precautions. And then you have to also make, um, you, you, you have to make other adjustments. So you know that's not a perp- that's not a reason to put a padlock on your door just because you can't have service on Sunday morning because it's an Omicron. So we want to be able to encourage the leaders, evangelists, pastors. You know, I even had leaders come to me and said, "Well, you know, since the um, since these uh, this virus has started, you know, it has been a blessing to me." I, and I asked them, I said, "Well, why? Why is the virus such a blessing to you?" And they said it, it, it caused them to, to have a uh, separate time from them and their leader. Well, I thought that was kind of ridiculous. You know, that's me generally speaking and what have you. I don't know what's going on with that. But we want in this segment to be able to encourage leaders as to how to get back up on the the, 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 uh, the, the stand where God has called them to be. This is not in, this don't have anything to do about no virus. We don't panic as leaders. We still stand and hold up the bloodstained banner regardless of the fact, and then we pray and make the adjustments that we need to make. So we want to talk about that, and so we're going to start off with this one with uh, uh, Pastor Angela, and you can be able to elaborate on that for us if you would. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, as you were talking, the um, can you hear me? Yes. As as we were as we were talking, I'm sorry. As you were talking, the the scripture that came to mind was Hebrews thirteen eight. You know, Christ is the same today, yesterday, as He is today. And in in understanding that, in understanding that our God is God all by Himself, and that we don't need to help Him, we don't need to remind Him of what He He did the other day, because He is ever creating and ever with us, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes we pray, people will pray, and and they believe that they have to remind God of 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 what it means to be God. Now, God, I know you're gonna do, and you said, and you mm-hmm. can, and all of that. There's a difference between recalling what the word says and telling God how to be God. God doesn't need us to tell um, him how to be God. With that being Mm -hmm. said, I think that as ministry leaders, we need to continue to be the church, still be that cornerstone of the community, Mm -hmm. that we still need Mm -hmm. to be exactly who God has called us to be, exactly who God has Mm -hmm. purposed the church to be, that we still mm-hmm. need to do those things that allow us to fellowship with, with like believers, those things that allow us to honor the Sabbath, however we would do that traditionally in our church, mm-hmm. be it that mm-hmm. it is on a Saturday, it's on a Sunday, it's at 11 o'clock or it's at 3 p.m. or it's at 6 o'clock, that there's a youth <laughs> service or uh, a service for the seniors, however that is. But I also, and and it may just be a generational thing, but I also believe that God has given us technology. And with this technology, that not only are we able to share the gospel with all the world, Mm -hmm. but that we Mm -hmm. should use this as an opportunity to not only connect our congregation or keep our congregation connected, 
but to also reach mm-hmm. those people that we would not have normally been able to get out there and reach. I know that one of the things mm-hmm. that we did is we simply recorded the um, the services, and it just streamed live. So you were still mm-hmm. able to have church on Sunday. You were still able to do Bible study on Wednesday. Now, this was before mm-hmm. there was a vaccine. So, you know, we were everyone was still on lockdown and all of that and you you operated according mm-hmm. to what your local uh city or government was was telling you to do. But now that that we have been vaccinated, I think more and more people are starting to get back to a very traditional sense of what it means to go to church. And I think that we need to spend time in prayer and get those individual answers um as as parishioners. As leaders, we need to understand what our role is, and that is to lead. Leaders show up. Leaders get out there. Leaders are in the trenches with everyone else. They are not leading from afar. They are leading from from the front, from the middle, and from the back. And if we, too, can, can figure out how to do that best, for our congregation, for our community, and still um, abide by the rules and regulations and mandates of our cities and, and the various ordinances that we that we have to take into consideration, I think that we can be successful. Um, I do not think that we need to allow old ways of thinking to hinder us from making sure that our church continues to be the church for the community and that we are still doing what God has, has called us to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Pastor Gibbons. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, the when you were Diane, when you first started out talking about this next segment here, the first uh, scripture that uh, that came to my heart and mind in it all was uh, after doing all to stand, stand therefore. And um, um, I think uh, as I kind of elaborate on that, one of, one of the one thing that is is very important is um, is knowing the state of your flock, like who who you have with you, and uh, and as the Lord says, you know, do this or do that particular thing. Who you know that'll be backing you and all that good stuff, so that you can better communicate mm-hmm. to the knowing the people helps you to communicate to the people better. And so for me, I think an effective leader is. Uh, not only knowing what to say, but knowing how to say it and when to say it, and and sometimes even to whom to say it. And so that's that's very important. And the Lord gives us things, and and so we we might have to we might be saying a thing to this group of people at this point in time, and to the larger body at this point in time, so that we can further what we are ultimately wanting to accomplish. There, um, having said all of that, I, I do think it's important. Two things: one is to not be distracted by all of the distractions. Actions. There, there, there is a lot that's going on uh, with it in whether there's television, media, and all of that good stuff. We have got some positive things going on re- right here, right now, and that's awesome. But there, there are a lot of distractions that are out there that have have nothing to do with God, nothing to do with kingdom, and and quite honestly, nothing to to do with uh, with the virus that, that is at hand. But people uh, are using this as an opportunity to profit for themselves, and so I, I think it's important for us to figure out what is going on and what's really happening and and be mindful of those things but don't get distracted by all of the other things that are are surrounding the the real issue and the real thing um and then also you know um for for those that uh may still be in a slow state or uh still uh shut down or not meeting on a regular basis you know i would i would mm-hmm. encourage in this moment and in this time to begin to prepare um you know there there was there was a time and a season in in scripture in old testament where the lord told the people you haven't given the land rest for 40 years and so now everybody's going to rest for these 40 years and mm-hmm. uh, and so we have we've we've had uh we've had a season and some are still in that season of like mandatory rest and so i would say, i would encourage in that time in this time to begin to prepare, seek God and ask him what he's doing in the days to come, in the months to come, in the year or two to come, so that that when when you feel comfortable of going out and going after what the Lord says, you'll you'll know what it is, know what it is and where it is and the direction that the Lord has you going. And so it's not a figuring out once it's time to go, but you're figuring it out now, taking that time, preparing and spending it with the Lord. Uh, we had a, a, a situation at the church. We uh, at Buckhead Life, we went back to 
having service a little bit sooner than than everybody else did in our community. Um, I know, be that as it may, uh, when we we showed up um, one of those early Sundays after being back, and uh, I was informed before it happened that the news would would be there. And so um, I I was ready for it, and I was expecting them to be there. And so I, I showed up. Uh, on Sunday morning, like I show up on Sunday morning, and sure enough, the news was there, and um, and so uh, the guy that was doing uh, the the recording, the interview, and all of that good stuff, um, I, I went to go speak with him, and I said, hey, I knew you guys were coming, and I hear you want to um, talk through these particular things here, and I mentioned those particular things that um, that that I was under the impression that we would be talking about, and uh, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, is there anything else? Is there anything else that 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 I should be aware of? And uh, he was like, oh, no, you know, when we start this out, I'll I'll ask you ask you like a general question. You tell me your name, where you're from, the church name, and all that good stuff, so we can have that as a part of the segment. And I said, okay, you'll let me know when you're ready, and uh, so. Um, <laughs> and so we do a countdown in five, four, three, two, one, and he asks that general question, and I give that general answer. And then after I ask, answer his question, he says, uh, he says, so we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. What makes you think that it's okay for you to meet together with your church of people? <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. and so I left, and I was like, well, that's that's pretty. Good. I chuckled a bit because I thought it was pretty interesting. I'd asked him what we were going to talk mm-hmm. about, and he didn't mention anything about that. Uh, and mm-hmm. so I said, you know, um, the scripture said that we ought not to uh, forsake the assembling of ourselves uh, with those who are righteous. And so, you know, we're going to do that, and we have the constitutional right to do that. But a bigger thing in in, in this, too, is, you know, there there's been, there have been guidelines that have been issued by our state and our community, and we're following those guidelines. We're, we're, we're doing everything mm-hmm. that they've asked us to do. And I said, we, I believe that intelligent people put those guidelines in place. And I also believe that I myself and and our congregation are intelligent enough to follow those guidelines. And so we'll do that and we'll honor God by not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together and we'll go have a good time. And, uh, and that's exactly what we did. And so I, again, after doing all to stand, you stand there for, you figure out what the Lord is calling you to do, where he's calling you to, then what he's calling you to do. And then you, you do that, and um, I, 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 I believe with all my heart and with great fervor that 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 calling doesn't stop. It isn't hindered. It isn't in in any way, any wise diluted or anything like that. We continue that, and until the Lord mm-hmm. comes to pick us up, and, um, and so. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and so the next question is in regards to uh, basically the same uh, thing. Um, so uh, about for the last past five years, I've had an opportunity to be um, I'm a member of the, uh, the Full Gospel Baptist International uh, Organization under uh, the former uh, bishop was, uh, I came under Bishop Paul Morton. And so, um, and I kind of had a feeling something was coming, that that, that none of these viruses had appeared or anything. So we was on a conference call, all of the pastors and what have you. And so I think an issue had came up one Sunday in his area where he lived at, where he was not able to assemble with the members because I think it was like a ice storm or something like that that happened in Louisiana or wherever he stationed at. And so... um, to make a long story short, he went in and he gave all of the leaders a descriptive way of how to, which has totally gotten out of hand today. Everybody's cashing out for everything and, and, and what have you. And um, But anyway, he gave the leaders a descriptive way of how to manage the ministry, even if um, <clears throat> even if there comes a time where the pastor cannot be able to connect with his or her body of parishioners. So this question is going to be for uh, for you two as the speakers, and we're going to start with Doctor and Pastor Angela in in regards to virtual ministry. Do you feel that this is going to be something that is going to be a long lasting um, effect that pastors may 
um, have to endure because it seems like these variants continue to come out. And, of course, we want to be able to make sure that safety is first, and then, of course, we want to be able to be obedient to God and as well as to um, the community and ordinances that they have put out. Because um, I first started off, it was virtual. Before before any virus came, you know, just as what you were stating, it was I didn't I, I didn't have a building. It first started off some years ago as actually virtual, and it started off just as yours did, Pastor Angela, as a radio broadcast. So talk to us a little bit about that, and then to share with the audience about it's not it's we don't have to fear whatever direction that God leads us into in regards if it continues to be virtual for some pastors, I'll put it like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And thank you so much for, for that question. Um, I think that the the overall the overall answer is going to be it depends on the pastor of each church and each ministry. There are some pastors who cannot wait until um, all is well, and it will be uh, in person. Doors of the church open only. They will decide that they will no longer do any form of virtual um, type of connection. There will be mm-hmm. those who will um, say, you know what, we could use the the church building less and do virtual more because it saves on cost. And then we have the people okay. that are going to be in the middle. Right, depending on the size of your ministry. So if you are a church that is starting that's first starting off and you know, your overhead is still kinda high because you may not have uh, a lot of uh parishioners yet, that could be a concern. Mm-hmm. So on and so forth. So that's what I mean by it really and truly depends on the leadership of each church. If you're a pastor of a church that has two thousand members and more, uh your concerns are of course much different than a pastor who only has 20 or 30 people coming, uh, you know, mm-hmm. on, on a regular basis. And all of those people may or may not tithe on a regular basis. So with that being mm-hmm. said, of course, there are some extreme, um, different circumstances that we have to look at there. However, from from the perspective of someone who uh, utilizes media as a way to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, I think mm-hmm. that every church Every leader, every ministry should include some form of media in their outreach, be it that it is their Mm -hmm. evangelism team, uh, it Mm -hmm. is their singles ministry, their marriage ministry, whatever it is. And why do I I say that? In particular, because uh, the millennial generation and Generation Z, which is uh, part of my target audience, um, that's how they're listening. They're not always coming into a very traditional setting, but if they can watch you on TV, watch you from their phone or from their iPad, that's an additional resource. That's an additional Mm -hmm. way that you can also get to them. So do I think Mm -hmm. that traditional church needs to stand? Absolutely. Do I think that Mm -hmm. virtual uh, events? And, and resources can assist you absolutely because you mm-hmm. may be the difference because you choose to have that 3 p.m. virtual service um, or simply stream it, even though you may be in your church, in your sanctuary, you're choosing to stream it as well. You could be the church. You could be the pastor, the leader that is um, actually bringing someone to Christ that day. I do not think that we mm-hmm. need to discount um, the various forms of media. If we look back over um, the ways in which we have shared the the gospel, um, there has been stations like the TVNs of the world, because there are now more than one, mm-hmm. but they have been mm-hmm. trying to get the message of salvation across this great planet for years. Um, and according, again, to, to the leadership of each pastor and each church, is the, the answer is going to be different. But for me, absolutely continue to to utilize those means of media that are going to reach even more people. Um, I think it's also good for us to can shut in. That was one of the things that I heard from our women's ministry is that when I had, um, I used to do uh, Lunch in the Lord with uh, mm-hmm. with our women's ministry. 
and mm-hmm. they would say, Dr. Angela, we love this because sometimes I just don't feel as well as I could. Not sick, but just, you know, not 100%. But being able to right. join you on Zoom or being able to join you on a conference call and still get the mm-hmm. word for the day, still have that mm-hmm. worship service with you was a beautiful thing. So please don't stop that. So in listening to what our parishioners are telling us and listening to to what the community is asking us to do, I think that we need to make sure that we do not allow um, uh, our own personal desires, hopes, wishes, and ego to get in the way and to actually do what God has called us to do, but also be able to utilize the resources that we have available in such a time as this so that we can make sure that even more people are being brought to Christ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, because yeah. there's nothing like being in the pews with other individuals. While you know, I, I come from a, a Pentecostal. Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up Pentecostal. I grew up in another type of denomination. But from right now, Pentecostal non-denomination. So when you're in there and everybody's on the same accord, the Holy Spirit comes in and He embarks upon the house. So powerful. And so I do agree with you. You know, it depends on what the circumstances may be, whatever the Lord may be leading that pastor or that leader for, you know, in that season. But as as, as you stated, also making sure that we tap into the resources that the Holy Spirit releases to us and we utilize those. So, Pastor Gibbons, we would also love for you to be able to expound on that as well. Absolutely. And again, thank you for the opportunity, too. I, I want to start at the place of uh, shut-ins. I, I thought that was great, uh, what the doctor mentioned there. Um, and, and I think that um, ministry as a whole, even even for us b- before 2020 and all of that stuff happened, you know, mm-hmm. ministry mm-hmm. to the shut-in was, was limited to either my schedule or volunteers. And so if I'm having a full, super full schedule or there are no vol- volunteers available for whatever period of time, the, the, mm-hmm. the shut-ins, you know, are having to make do until, right? And um, I think that when and the, the statistics were out when when at the beginning in 2020 when all of when everything went down um but it was it was staggering the amount of churches in ministry that did not have a virtual ministry of any kind prior to mm-hmm. March of 2020 and all of those those ministries had to play catch up at that point and um mm-hmm. i i think mm-hmm. that it's important but because of that, first because of the, the shut ins and the people that aren't able to make it to the building and weren't able to make it to build it to the building before March of twenty twenty. It's important for us to both have this tool and to utilize it. And uh, you know, things are happening and coming up at but seemingly every day, and so being that this tool is available, I also think it's 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 highly effective too. I, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. I I will say that until Jesus comes to get us. But I also on on the on the opposite side of the same token, I believe it is vitally important for us to 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 use this this tool of media. I think if Paul were here today. My goodness, Jesus probably would have already come back because he would have he would have been <laughs> most effective at using this tool. Every tool that was available to him, he used it in his day, and so mm-hmm, I, I think mm-hmm. this is is a major tool. And and I think for you know I I could understand if somebody were to have some type of pushback, and I think I think the goal then would be to to try and find the positive spin to it to, to everything that's happening. There there is a way to to spin it positive. Positively and to to see the good in it, and and I think to the with the ability to be able to reach people that were a part of the that are a part of the congregation and not able to to show up and be in the physical building that's important. But then also, you know, put putting it out there, whether it be Facebook or the live stream or whatever it may be, there there are people people, even if even if none of uh, your or, congregants are on the internet at all it the world is on the internet <laughs> and so uh, mm-hmm. putting that that gospel message out there and making it available maybe zero percent of your parishioners currently listen but there are people that are in the world that are that are flipping through that are scrolling through trying to find something and the lord could use that what you said that day to be the gospel and to preach the gospel to that person and then we go we go from from there i i think 
the needs of the people is uh, is kind of pushing us to be more and more um, uh, of media driven, if you will. And and I think there are ways to do both. Um, uh, both be in the house and uh, be present as it relates to to the things of the media and things like that. And so I'm I'm for it 100. percent Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair enough. Okay, so we want to we want to get into our second segment that we're going to be talking about, and uh, as far as in regards to the church, and that's health initiatives. And uh, and of course, when we were coming up in church, um, you know, they didn't preach or teach anything about you know, as of course, as, uh, Pastor uh, Angela has stated before, you know, it's according to the leader and what have you. And sometimes uh, it could be to the fact that the individual may not be aware. You know, something. You know, I tell people. All the time, this this one leader had told me said, "Well, you know, the Lord ain't shared that with me yet. God is not going to share anything with a person that has a limited mindset. So, you, our mindset can only handle uh, what it is that we're willing to receive in it. God can reveal things to us, but if He knows that we're going to push it back out, He's not going to give us anything. And so, in regards to that, sometimes you know, and this is not no criticism against the." The, the you know the pioneers and what have you when back when I was coming up in the 60s and 70s there's nothing against you know I don't have anything against them but today we have so much illnesses and I feel that the church should be somewhat partial responsible for helping individuals to learn a little bit more about their health to uh, to uh, help them to be able to you know um, uh, be more health driven. You know, we 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 sit back and we we quote all these scriptures and cliches, but then we go back to uh, bad, poor choices of the foods that we eat. Like, you know, I think I ministered some years ago, maybe about 15 years ago, about you know this fat back meat, this sausage, this bacon, and then we say, oh, I'm not gonna claim this in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, th- there's no such thing as that you're not gonna claim it in the name of Jesus Christ if you see a gobbling down all of that those foods those fats that are not good for healthy for your body no one is teaching about it and what have you and so therefore we we say watch this now we sit back and say well the lord give it and the lord take it away blessed be the name of the lord well god ain't took nothing away you took your own health away because you did not follow the proper healthy guidelines that they have you know things that are, are good for us Things that taste good for us is probably going to be the things that are worse for us. And the things that don't taste so good, like turnips and different things like that, well, we don't like that. But that's what's going to be good for our body. And so that's what we want to talk about is to be able to share with some, uh, you know, the the audience and, 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 and the pastors and leaders in regards to health initiatives, helping the people to be able to take control and authority over their health. See, we just take that, that scripture and, you know, he gave us dominion. You know, that's for me to go out there and catch a fish and fry him. No, 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 no. It's dominion, the whole works. He gave all of it to us. That's because of his love. That's not because he gave it to us to control and have authority over him. But he, but God, we have to be able to be open in a lot of areas. You know, so we can be able to be more effective and we can be able to grow more. So we're going to start with, with, with Pastor Angela and be able to share a little bit about with other clergy and ministers of how uh, important it is to be able to look, look, and I'm going to share this with you right quick. I had an opportunity to be able to, uh, this Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, of Tennessee, they came, this, that's where I'm from, I'm from the state of Tennessee. So one of the one of the agents came to me, they said, you can find me these pastors and stuff that's willing to be able to let me come in and just be able to do just a, um, a presentation with their churches. I will be able to come in and the state will donate free training, exercising equipment to that church. Don't you know I couldn't find mm. no leader that was willing to do that? You, 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 you see where I'm coming from? So sometimes, you know, we, we, we make up all of these excuses. My knees is hurting because it's cloudy and stuff. Well, that's witchcraft. That's not true. And then, <laughs> and then we make up all of these other demonic uh, uh, cliches that we say that, is, that, that don't have no bearing on the scriptures, period, and what have you. And just, I'm, I'm serious. There was no one that I could be able to find that was willing to let her come in and do a 30-minute presentation, and the church would receive 
you know, uh, you know, treadmills, you know, exercising equipment, uh, different things to, to be able to help them with uh, aerobics and all kind of different. That, those, those are not dirty words. We think stuff that just because it's not talking about scripture, we think it's a sin. That's not true. And so we, you know, sometimes we have to come out of some of these old time and stigmatisms. And so this is not nothing to be judgmental or anything like that, but I'm just saying I could not find a pastor that was willing to allow Blue Cross Blue Shield to come in and do a 30-minute presentation and to be able to achieve these resources. Pastor Angela, talk to me. I could not agree with you more that we need to change our mindsets. That is one of the things that I talk about all the time. When you change your paradigm, you change your mindset. When you change your mindset, you change your outcome. You change the things you do and you change the results that you get. Now, we have to understand mm-hmm. that, um, of, of course, there was a time, and especially in American history, where there were enslaved relatives of ours. Uh, they ate what was given to them, and they made do at that particular time with what was mm-hmm. given. Uh, we are no longer in that place. We are now in mm-hmm. a place where we are able to afford foods that are better for us. So when you know better, you should do better. So with that being said, we should ever strive to do better, right? But we also Mm -hmm. understand, because Scripture tells us that our body is not ours, but it is the Lord's. It is the Mm -hmm. temple for, for God to indwell with us, to spend time with us, and that we should be a, sticking with the media side of things, we should be a billboard for the Lord. So if we're going to be a billboard for the Lord, we should make sure that everything is in the best possible condition that it can be in so that we can make the best possible presentation. So I think mm-hmm. that right now what has happened is that we are allowing the politics of the day, we are allowing the tit for tat, the back and forth, the up and down, to get in the way of how we would normally conduct ourselves. So if you found, if one found out that they were a diabetic, what would they do? They would do the protocol as suggested by their MD. If one was afraid of catching the flu, and especially if you are in the senior category, what would you do? You would mm-hmm. do the protocol for the flu vaccination, so on and so forth. So now when it comes to COVID, all of a sudden, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to deal with it. And I, and I think that a lot of that is just peer pressure on one side or the other. It is simply peer pressure. But we need to instead spend time with the Lord. We need to get in our prayer closet. We need to have that mm-hmm. quiet time and say, Lord, what mm-hmm. would you have me do in this situation? If we are supposed to seek the Lord first and foremost, then we should continue to do that exact thing. Now, when it comes to making sure that we are um, getting the information out about being vaccinated, that we are talking about health programs and, and how we can be healthy, I think that as a church, as a ministry, as leaders, we should Kind of do a survey of what's going on in our congregation. What are what are the people who are coming uh, to our church? What are they suffering with? What are they dealing with? So if it's diabetes, if it is high blood pressure, if it mm-hmm. is a hair loss, if it is just making sure that we are eating the best possible foods, then those people should be visiting on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be, you know, a whole church service. But it can actually be someone in the fellowship hall, let's say, after church or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It can be a minute Mm -hmm. permission, if you will, where they come and make a presentation. But we need to be mindful. We need to be aware. Because if if I can help you as as a leader for the day, be it that I am working as the pastor or I am simply working as leader of women's ministry, however I am operating, I need to be able to help you be your best. And if we can be mindful from that aspect, I think that it will help people remember not only who they are, but whose they are, and that we have a certain responsibility to continue to be the best that we can be according to what Scripture mandates us to do. Now, there are going to be some people that don't that don't agree with me, and that's and that's okay, you know, but mm-hmm. I, I totally and completely believe that we should do the best possible thing, not just for ourselves, but also for mm-hmm. our neighbor, not just for ourselves, 
before our brother and sister in Christ. And mm-hmm. if that means my getting vaccinated or my taking care of my health is going to help my brother and sister in the pew also be well, then let's do that so that we can mm-hmm. get back to this full and complete fellowshipping of the body of Christ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it shows it shows a a a a a a, a over desire of love. Because if I'm living and I'm breathing, I'm healthy. I want my parishioners to be healthy. I want my neighbors to be healthy. I want my family members. Everybody is not going to be able to agree with certain things. You know, even with the vaccine, they're trying to work on a fourth vaccination. I've gotten three of them with the you know, including the booster as of now. But there is no way that I'm going to sit there and reject it. You know, you know, we have a pastor here in Tennessee. He came under fire. He was on the news. He was telling his parishioners, "Hey, look, don't go and take that sugar water." That's what he called it. To the, to the, to, that's what he. I'm serious. He got on 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 the news, and they recorded him and what have you. Total embarrassment. And so he told them it was sugar water. He told them don't take it or what have you. But I feel now with the, everything is not 100 percent, but. With the flu shot, we had to take that. And even when we were children, they got a big uproar about the children not even taking the vaccinations and what have you. But when before we even went to school, we had to have these vaccinations. So I think it's a it's a it's a little bit you know people are saying it's my religion. I'm not going for that. I'm not. God is my healer. I'm not going to take this vaccination. I'm not going to take any of these uh, things. And so that's what some parishioners here in the South are teaching. Um, They're parishioners in which they have that right. They have that right to be able to teach them whatever that they feel or what have you. But I feel that I feel that if if I'm a leader, any kind of leader, I don't have to have pastor on my name. I can be just an usher. If I'm a leader Absolutely. and I'm a president Absolutely. of an usher board. I would want to go in there. You know what? I got all of my vaccinations. You know what? It would be beneficial if you all would be able to do the same thing too. See, but because if it spreads, you know, uh, uh, you know. Okay, so take for instance, I'm going to say, and then I'm going I'm to let you. I'm going to let you loose in just a minute, uh, Pastor Gibbons. So we were in the middle of having. <laughs> we were because y'all are giving some very, very good answers and responses. We were in the middle of uh, the pandemic. It was finna get ready to ease on in there. And so I had scheduled a women's conference. And so, you know, that's the reason why it's always good to take constructive criticism and feedback from people and from others. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. So I I called the facility where we were hosting the event at, and so – uh, I think the name of the the, the 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 women's conference was "Can a sister get some help?" What happens after the the pastor gets through putting putting down the microphone and all of that other stuff and the dancing and the shout? So, anyways, I called her. I called the the, the 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 leader who was speaking. I said, "We can't even have the conference anymore and stuff because this guy is not going to let me come in, and I'm going to have more than ten people." I was offended and I was upset. And don't you know that that speaker set me back on straight street? That speaker told me, he said, that you're not going to be that selfish and and have the event knowing that people can get a, 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 a infected and you don't know who got the virus or anything. So it had to open up my eyes because there were many components of love. There was many components of self-centeredness. There's many components of selfishness. It's just not no one particular fault. It can open up different branches of love, hate. Uh, you know, you can kill people with a gun. You can kill people with your mouth and what have you. And it had to help me to stop to think. I said, you know what? I would be really actually putting these people at a risk. So it had to help me to humble myself. It had to help me to humble mm-hmm. myself and come down and be able to look at the issues of the people besides me looking at the issues of myself of what mm-hmm. I wanted to put on. So that's the reason why I wanted to make that 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 topic, that speech. I want to make that sentence. I want to make that declaration. And that's damn. Simply because of the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. I did not mean to cut you off. Um, but I didn't want to. I did not want to interrupt Pastor Givens, but before he gave his answer, just to kind of piggyback off what you were saying there. When when we were trying to decide for Daily Spark TV if we were going mm-hmm. to continue to shoot in person. It was a very tough decision to make, but yet it was very easy. So for someone who is trying okay. to figure it out right now, right? They're they're still rolling it around in their heads and they're trying to figure out do we open mm-hmm. the church doors, do we not? What do we what do we do? I had mm-hmm. to look at the fact that 
over all of the years that I had been filming, I had people that were coming in from Australia, people coming in from London, mm-hmm. people coming in mm-hmm. from Canada, but also from from a film in in Virginia. So people from California, from Texas, from New York, right? We had an mm-hmm. international guest list because we're an international show. Now that's not a brag. Mm-hmm. That is to show how right. everyone's lives were being touched. Right. So if I am going to be mm-hmm. an effective leader, if I am going to be responsible, then I have to say, Lord, do I continue to do this or not? And if you Come say on. no, because I believe that if you should close this window, you will open another, please show right. me that which you would have me do. Come on. Come on. So in, mm-hmm. in choosing to say, I am so sorry, don't book a flight yet, because we don't think we're going to do this, but you will still be on the show. We found a mm-hmm. solution in what we now call remote filming, right, in, in doing it from mm-hmm. your home and figuring out how to do it. So I don't want someone to become disheartened just because they're not able to, to walk in the fullness of the vision that mm-hmm. God has given them and the fullness right. of what they believe that they have been called to do, there will be a time and a place for that. The Spanish flu, the 1918 flu, did not last forever. My grandparents right. lived through it, and, you know, so uh, it, does not, it does not last forever. But we do need to be ready for when the Lord says go, we can still go, and we can utilize the lessons that he has taught us during this time that we are still able to, to use that and still continue to spread the gospel. And and I will I will concede the floor so that uh, uh, Pastor Gibbons can just give his answer. Go ahead, Pastor Gibbons. Indeed. <laughs> um, so I, <laughs> no, I, 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 it's good. I appreciate everything that is being shared there. Um, I'm trying to see which angle I want to come at this. I think there's um, a couple of things here, and stick with me through the whole thing here. Um, I, I want to address both uh, vaccination and then, as you were talking about the health equipment as well. There. Um, first thing I want. First thing I want to say is. Well, actually, I want to mention to what, what Dr. Angel- Angela said there, um, and and having to decide: um, Are these people going to come in, or aren't they going to come in? And then uh, and then doing the the remote the remote filming and all of that stuff. I, I think in in this time that uh, we find ourselves in, um, I, I have a 12 year old boy, and um, one thing I've told him constantly is. Uh, when I tell him constantly is um, you got a solution fine. You know, sometimes you're doing a math problem. Remember in school it says solve the problem, and then other, other times it would say find the solution. And I prefer the find the solution side of things versus the solve the problem. Um, you know, the problem is the problem, and sometimes if we get to focusing too much on that problem, it gets big, 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 and we can get flustered. But if we if we can if we can consider what it is that we're wanting to accomplish and then go after that. I, I, I think that that helps us a bit better there, and I really like how Dr. Angela said, "Hey, how can we still get this job done?" Like that's the ultimate goal, getting the job done. Uh, there's these things that are going on, and then they were able to find a way, find a solution and a way around the things that were going on and accomplish that. And so I, I think it's important in these times to begin the solution, find to figure out some new and some innovative ways to do the same things that God has called us to do. And I think those new and innovative ways uh, uh, will take us further than um, perhaps the, 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 than what we were doing as a standalone uh, previously. Um, also, you know, I, I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a twofold thing to me. I, I'm, I'm, when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at coins, I'm mindful that there's, there's two sides of it and it's, but it's the same coin. Um, mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I think that, uh, I think that vaccination is a choice, but as a leader personally, I had to decide one, <laughs> I thought it was interesting what you said about the pastor that was on the news. Um, <laughs> I, I had to ask myself the question, what is it that I want? And this was a literal question that I asked myself, my wife and I, we talked about, okay. what is it that we want to be on the news for? Like, do do I want to be on the news? And I don't, I don't know anything about that, Pastor, but the question is, do I want to be on the news for saying, you know, it's sugar water? Uh, do I want mm-hmm. to be on the news for, uh, uh, you know, 
saying this thing or doing this particular thing, or do I want to be, what is it that I want to be on the news for? And I need to decide what that is ahead of time in case in these times with those cameras everywhere, suddenly I'm on the news. And so I decide ahead of time and then I live accordingly. And, and so whether it's a planned news, (laughs) news show or uh, something that comes up uh, suddenly that I wasn't aware of, um, if I'm suddenly on the news and I wasn't there, it's already been, I've, I've, my family and I've already decided what we wanted to be on the news for. And so being ahead of that, being ahead of the game on that is, uh, I think it's important. And then secondly, you know, particularly as it relates to vaccination, it was, for me, it's a decision of can I uh, affect, and, and I appreciate the things that have been said so far about loving the community and all of these good things here. Uh, for me, mm-hmm. it was it was a little bit different of an issue or, or more was in a, a different I came from it, at it from a different angle. Is can I can I accomplish what God is calling me to do, or what God has called me to do? And I yeah, I, I didn't mention a lot of these things in the beginning, but I, I do a, I do a lot of traveling and a lot of international things as well. And so it's like, do do I say no to these things? <laughs> because there's a there's a there's a checkpoint now. You either have a vaccination or you don't. And it's like, all right, my interest into this country, into this place, do the things that, that God has called me to do. Um, and, am I going to? And am I going to let something as simple as a vaccination prevent me from doing the thing that God has called me to do? And for the, and me, for me, the answer to that is no. I, I've been in the military too, and I remember uh, uh, standing in line and going down the line and getting. Who knows what they put in my arm that those those couple of fateful days where where that that happened, um, but <laughs> it, it was so that the mission could be accomplished. And so for me, it's the same thing here. I want to be able to accomplish the mission, and so I have to I have to uh, respond accordingly there. Um, and so then the last little thing I want to make mention of here is uh, when you were talking about the pastors and. Um, um, and not being able to get in. I wish I was a Georgia thing because I'd sign up for that. I'd, I'd use some um, exercise equipment. That'd be awesome there to have it to show up at the church for 30 <laughs> minutes of uh, a speech. That sounds great to me. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the scripture says in, and I just want to read it. The scripture says in Exodus 23, 25, and 26, it says, uh, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and, and your water. And he will take sickness away from the midst of you, and nothing shall cast their uh, cast their young or miscarriages, or nor shall mm-hmm. any be barren in the land. And he says, the number of your days I will fulfill. And this is beautiful. This is, he says, I, the Lord your God. This is like Yahweh Elohim. This you don't get much bigger than this. Like he's using his big name on this one. And uh, I'm I'm re- I'm I'm removing this sickness and disease from you. These miscarriages and barrenness in the land. All of it. I'm taking it all of it out of the land. And uh, I'm going to make sure all of your days are fulfilled here in the earth. And he says, I'm going to do that by blessing your bread and water. And so I, I think it's interesting that he is connecting to he's connecting sickness um, and miscarriages and barrenness to bread and water. I just find that very, very interesting. There. Um, you know, and as Dr. Angela was talking um, uh, in this past little segment here, uh, she made mention starting out about our body is the temple. I, I believe with all my heart that uh, like she says that our bodies are the temples of the living God and I believe that one way to serve him is through our bread and our water. He says and you shall serve the Lord your God and so I, in verse 25 that I believe that that one way for us to serve him is through by our bread and water. Now listen, I I've, I've said this before. I, you know, I grew up, and when when they had they had church, man, and uh, I, I never I never wished uh, sickness and disease or death on anybody. But I'm gonna tell you something. When those old ladies got to cooking because somebody was sick, man, you wanted to be where those plates were gonna be because that was gonna be some good eating. And if somebody passed away, man, everybody. I mean, they the best plates you could possibly. I mean, some of the best eating you could eat. It was it, and that was that was good stuff. And 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 I I enjoyed that, and I miss those days from time to time. And uh, but but the the more we learn, the more we grow, and then the more we see, right? Um, and so I, I, I 
where I am today, I, I have to believe that if the Lord says I'm removing sickness and disease from you and um, I'm, I'm getting rid of the miscarriages and the barrenness and I'm making sure you're living out your days, and he says that all around food, I have to take knowledge of that. I have to acknowledge what he's saying there, and particularly when he says, uh, starts out by saying, serve the Lord. And so I, I personally think that it, it is a way uh, of 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 service to the Lord by being conscious about what the, the things that we are consuming, and uh, so for us, one thing that we've done, we've done the uh, the Daniel fast a lot the first twenty one days of the year or twenty one days in January, and uh, this year we said, all right, so we're gonna do the Daniel fast. With a couple of exceptions um, Except instead of 21 days this year We're going to do it for 31 days And I said um, All the other things it says to leave out We're going to leave what all those things out What do you mean by the out. Holy See? Pardon? Go ahead Go ahead It was someone in okay. the audience They have their hand raised and stuff So I've muted them out uh, until you complete Okay okay alright sounds good um, And so um, One so what we said we we're going to do is we're going to do the Daniel fast, and instead of 21 days this year, we're going to actually do 31 days, um, and, but we're going to add meat to it. And the purposes of it this year is for us to begin to create healthy lifestyles. And so let's begin mm-hmm. to make some transitions, right? And so a big part of Daniel is to get out those those carbs and those sugars, man. And so, all right, we're going to omit those things from our diet or because of the fast, but we're also going to add meat mm-hmm. this year. And my hope is that, you know, it says it's only take 21 days to build a habit. And so give it an extra 10, and we've built a, a healthier lifestyle. And so without the sugars, and we keep on eating the meat, then see how long that we can keep this up. I think we ought to be fit for God in his kingdom so we can do the work that he's called us to do. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair enough. That's great. So uh, for the audience, uh, there were a few hands that were uh, raised uh, in the studio, so we're going to go through the entire segment. And so if there are any questions, we don't want anyone to blurt out and, of course, disrupt the speakers while they are trying to give their um, their their expertise of what they um, can be able to share with the audience. So we just want everybody to be able to respect that fact. So we're going to go to the last segment, and we're going to be talking about relationships and marriages, which is very, very important, um, even in the body of Christ. And the reason why is because, according to statistics, um, marriage uh, is 44.6 in divorce courts. And we just talked about that at the top of the segment and the top of the hour about, you know, how the church supposed to be, should be, you know, I would think that they would because Jesus taught the disciples and he uh, continues to teach us through the word of God in regards to our relationship in the book of Corinthians chapter 7. He teaches us about all of these things. So we want to talk about um how effective are marriages and single conferences within the body of Christ? Because now, uh, you know, different um, ministries uh, have migrated to different ways of teaching and training and what have you. And some of these um, um, events are very, very successful depending on what the motives are. Because, you know, as I mentioned to one uh, first lady, you're having this at your ministry, but if you have not gone through it, or what have you, how effective can that be for your ministry for you to be able to um, host or sponsor something if you're not effective in that area or you have not, you don't have anything to bring to the table that uh, yours have been successful? You know, I, I, I am. I'm just very bold with my comments. I'm sorry about that. And um, and I will put you in your place because we 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 have we represent when we're Christian leaders, pastors, evangelists, ministers, ushers, no matter deacons, deaconess, we are representing God. We're supposed to represent God, and we should mm-hmm. re- represent in an effective type of way, where the, the the where the ministry does not appear, the gospel does not appear tarnished, 
because we're doing something uh, because someone else is doing it, or it looks nice at, at, at the Buckhead Church. So since Reverend Gibbons is doing it, Pastor Gibbons is doing it, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to have a, a Iron Man uh, conference and what have you and things, or I'm going to have a uh, Women 2022. You know, everybody can't do the same thing. Everybody was not cut out for that. So this, this question, we're going to start with uh, Pastor Angela. And, um, uh, you know, if, if some of the experiences, especially with your virtual and, uh, you know, your um, brick-and-mortar uh, ministry, um, how effective is marriage and single conferences within the body uh, of Christ? Some first ladies, I'm telling you, they are a knock-down drag-out when it comes down to this topic. They will go in there and they will put the tools and resources together to, in order to uh, impact relationships because it is very, very important. Don't get up over the microphone and tell me, mm-hmm. or I don't even tell my parishioners, oh, you know, we're going to be praying for brother so-and-so because they're going through a divorce. No, what, 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 what's my purpose? I'm there standing, uh, sitting right there watching it. Can I pull you to the side and you all, we able to maybe set up a meeting or something like that? <clears throat> even though sometimes people are very private about their business, but I feel that if a person, a man of, and a woman of God are saved and they're in the church, they want to savage their relationship. So that's what we want to talk about, uh, the, sure. the effectiveness of how we should be able to have conferences or something to be able to solidify marriages and relationships within the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. I have found that a, a lot of the resources that we have available at the various churches and, and ministries mm-hmm. really is a in direct correlation to its senior pastor, to to the leader of that church or that ministry. How important okay. do you feel that certain resources and certain things are? If if senior pastor doesn't feel that it's important, then especially for some churches, it simply will not get done because it does not get that stamp okay. of approval. So there are okay. there are some other uh, churches that will that will find that even though perhaps the senior pastor doesn't uh, want to participate, like they don't want to lead that particular event, but they understand mm-hmm. the importance of said event, mm-hmm. and they will make sure that the proper associate minister, assistant man, uh, um, uh, minister, or whomever, the, the leadership is, is proper and true for that event. So I think that's mm-hmm. kind of looking at it um, from from an eagle's view is that we have to ask that question first, is do we have the okay to move forward? When you have the mm-hmm. okay to move forward, I have found that in the mid to high 90s, there is a success rate of the people who have marriage or have single conferences because it's something that's Mm -hmm. high on their list. So if you Mm -hmm. take the time to either prepare your own leadership to do it or you're bringing in, I'm going to say, professionals who do that. Like their ministry is singles ministry, and they put on these mm-hmm. type of events and travel around. Um, if you bring that, that, that group of people in or you train up your own leadership in order to do it, it is successful. How do we know that it's successful? Because we, if we would, would take a review of those who have participated, they will have the same such stories. Listen, we were on the brink of divorce, but because we went to the conference, mm-hmm. we learned some things mm-hmm. about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it when we send our our young people and our our young adults in particular uh, to singles ministry conferences, I think that it can have a profound effect on how they understand who they are in the body of Christ. But it also helps them understand who they are as an individual, that you are more than your body parts. You are more than just what you're presenting on Instagram. And if you understand that you are a child of the Most High, then you understand understand that it's not just about these fleshly things that we present. Now, I'm not trying to preach to anybody in that and, you know, or or get anybody down on that. But I I think Mm -hmm. that in a conference, we have to go with an open mind. But we also have to go and be honest with ourselves. What's, What's going on in your life? What do you need to work on? What do you need to discuss? Um, If you and your spouse are actually going through some stuff, be open and honest about that. You're not trying to throw Mm -hmm. your spouse under the bus or, you know, be condescending or overly sarcastic or Mm -hmm. even Mm passive-aggressive because that's something a lot of people do as well. They want to be Mm passive-aggressive about it. But let's really just be open and honest and say, here's my shortcoming. 
and this is what I would love to learn how to do. And in, in being honest, not only with ourselves, it allows us, I believe, to hear differently from God. Because you can't fool God, right? So if you know <laughs> that you are not being that, that Proverbs 31 woman. So on Instagram, you're talking about, you know, I'm a Proverbs 31 woman, and I got it all together, and I honor my husband, and my children are calling me blessed. Mm-hmm. But your children and your husband mm-hmm. have a totally different point of view. So if you're if right. you're not there yet, if you're not there yet, it doesn't mean that you cannot get there. You just simply need to get more resources, figure out what what am where am I lacking and, and what can what can I do to, to make it better. One of the things that I teach is uh if if you were to a webinar or a conference or something with me and, and this applies to many of the things that, that we have questions about. And I teach the acronym acronym of an honest app. An honest A-S-K. So first you have to assess the situation. What's really going mm-hmm. on? No, no, what's really going on? That's the stuff that you're telling your mom and daddy or your sister friends or whoever just so you know you can save face. But what's really going on there? The S is the supplement. Are there any things that you could do that could actually make it better? So now that you know what's going mm-hmm. on, and you understand that your husband wishes that you were still doing that thing that you did when you guys first started dating, or your wife finally admitted that she doesn't like that thing that you do but wishes that you would do this mm-hmm. instead, can you supplement some things? Can you stop doing one thing and start doing another? And the K is knowing your role or knowing your limits. Right. So one of the things that I talk about as a counselor is having boundaries. What are those things that is Mm -hmm, the line mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. sand? So Mm -hmm. we know our role and and, and what I, I mean all inclusive was to know your role and know your limits. If you and your spouse have agreed that these are the roles in which you will play, don't get out of your lane. You don't need you don't need to tell him how to do it. You know, he doesn't need to tell you how to do it because you have an understanding of what you're supposed to do. And we look at the example of playing uh, doubles tennis. When when you watch, and especially when uh, Serena Williams plays doubles tennis, and she doesn't do it a lot, but she has done it on occasion. When she does, she is a master of her square. So when we look at that tennis court, the court is has the various markings. And when you play doubles, you stay in your lane. Why is it important? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to get into the area where the other person knows is their lane. If you do, what happens? You could have a potential crash. For anyone who has played baseball or softball the way that I did, uh, if there's two people going after the ball, what do you do? You call it, I got it. Now, you better have it because you called it. So you say, I got it. So you avoid a potential crash. Error, and you don't want to have that st- that stat for your team. Mm-hmm. With that mm-hmm. being said, if we look at our various relationships, but our marriages in particular, and the relationships that we have with our children, then I think that if we can be emotionally high IQ people, if we can be mindful people, if we can use what Scripture has told us, then we can become our best selves. Now, we know that we can't be perfect. We know that that's that's unrealistic. But boy, can we give it a 99.99999% try each and every day when we wake up. So statistically speaking, we know that conferences are successful. We know that marriage counseling Mm -hmm. is successful. Marriage conferences Mm -hmm. are successful. Single conferences are successful. And the sooner that we can start implementing it in some way, shape, or form, into our own ministries, I think that we will see that our congregation will be so grateful for for what um, for what we have done as leaders, and that they in turn will, can also invite other people, right? So because mm-hmm. we're having a conference, mm-hmm. they're going to go, girl, I went to the one two years ago. You're going to have an amazing time. You guys should really go. Mm-hmm. And that comes in and they attend. And you never know. They may actually join your church or, or assist in your ministry in, in one way, shape, or form mm-hmm. because they realize mm-hmm. that not only – they get the help that they needed, but they were also poured into spiritually. 
And I and I think mm-hmm. that that is that is so important that we can feed the body, but we also need to make sure that we are we are feeding someone's spirit as well. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree because I feel that when we have when we sit down and we talk, and even though you know a lot of people try to di- differentiate between the fact, well, you know, church is not a business, is business business is not a church. I feel that when we communicate. You know that you know when we break down when we when we fail to communicate that you know we think that poverty well you know she don't have anything to eat but that's poverty no poverty starts in your mind okay that's where it starts it it don't start at no food table or anything like that you can be impoverished come on here in the mindset and then it can also flow down to other elements you know of your thinking and your way of life but I feel that the more we discuss certain things. They don't have to be on no Sunday morning. You know, you, you have to follow the Spirit of God. Not on a, not on a Sunday morning. But once we have these, these things, we have these, we talk about these criteria, it eliminates the devil from creating hybrids within the church. See, the devil can come in. You know, we have sexual people. You know, people have sexual harassment in the church. Yeah, they do. 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 There's sexual harassment that goes on in the church. There's different other type of abuses that go on in, on in the church, but if it's never discussed, that allows the, the, the person who is creating that type of environment to continue to filter on top of different things because, see, we have to talk about, you know, working on self-examination, getting delivered, you know, from some things from, you know, from from our past and what have you. And I feel that these programs, I feel that, you know, it's not just an event, it's a program. A program can be able to help. Everybody sees things different. I'm not saying that that's going to get you to heaven just because you have a marriage and single conference. It is not going to get us to heaven. But what I'm saying (laughs) is the more we communicate about things that go on around us, it's not, you know, it's not just uh, we're not supposed to be isolated on one specific thing, but, you know, things, and that's the reason why God went in and put those laws in and gave them to Moses. He went in and told them, if this happened right here, if they, they don't supposed to be, the men don't supposed to be laying down with the animals, they don't supposed to be doing that. He went in there and knocked out everything that the devil can come up with so that man would be wise enough to be able to capture these things and deal with them. You know, the choice is still left up to us. God can write the law and he can bring the law into uh, manifestation, but it's up to us whether we receive it or not. So I just feel that a lot of communication is very, very important. I don't talk about this on, on no virtual events or anything like that about marriage and different little things, but there's a time and place that I do set aside where I'll be able to talk to people and minister to them in these areas because you have a lot of men Men are men are go for years without saying nothing. The things can be pondering them, bothering them. They won't say anything. But if you look at how the men show up for the conference, I think it's uh, Bishop Jakes have this conference mm-hmm. uh, when the when we were not in the pandemic. He have this conference for men every year. I don't know if it's strong men or iron men. It'd be so many men come out because people be men be wanting to know how to handle their wives when they can't shut up. They want to be able to know. I'm serious. I'm just being honest. They want to be able to get the answers because they don't. Sometimes men, they carry such a big weight and a big load, they don't know how to relieve themselves of stress. And so I think that mm-hmm. when we communicate, talk about certain things, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's not, uh, mm-hmm. you know, too far that we shouldn't talk about. But I feel once we talk mm-hmm. about certain things and provide programs, I think that will be able to help us more effectively in our single and marriage uh, relationship. So now we're going to release and you know, Dr. You, and you Reverend know, Gibbons. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Can I, can I add just one little bit? I am so sorry. Um, it, because you mentioned something in it, and it, and it brought up a, a, a thought in my mind, and that is when we have marriage um, conferences and there is the, the co-ed option. So many marriage conferences are set up in a way where the men are going to go to one side and the women are going to go to a, to mm-hmm. another side. And that's all cool mm-hmm. and that's fine. However, usually on day number last or hour number last, whenever it is, you all mm-hmm. come back together. And there is that that co-ministering aspect to it. I cannot, uh, personally, I cannot say how important it is to have that particular aspect of it. Why? Because during that time, that is the time in which you utilize that Q&A 
where Mm -hmm. a man is able to ask a question and get a response from a woman that is not his wife that he knows that he doesn't have to really worry about it, right? So that that Mm. ministry leader, that woman can give an answer, but the man is also going to give an answer. The man is going to say it in man speak, and the woman is going to say it in woman speak. So he is able, Mm -hmm. and for women the same way, that man and that that individual person is able to hear from that um, gender same and gender opposite ministry leader what that would sound like. So it gives them an mm, option okay. to go, oh, is that what my wife has been saying? If I can just take another uh, another minute here to, to give an example. So sometimes mm-hmm. a wife will, will come into the room and will say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that you were here watching the game again. You were here. I'm, I'm in here slaving over the stove, making you dinner. You ain't spending no time with me, with the kids, you know, yada, yada. She's just going off. She's She's having a moment. Right, And all the man hears is kind of the wah, 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 nag, nag, nag. Now, Mm -hmm. if you were in that co-ed last day, part of the marriage um, conference, that woman leader would say, what your wife is really telling you is, babe, I want you to spend more time with me. Babe, I enjoy my time with you. I really Mm -hmm. wish that you could give a little bit more time to me. But instead, she doesn't know how to express herself, so it comes across as the nag, nag, nag. But Mm -hmm. that simple understanding and having someone explain that to both parties, right, Mm -hmm. can actually help that marriage be be saved, go go to a totally different height, simply because they understood that the complaint isn't necessarily and always a complaint, but sometimes it is a request for more of that person's attention, love, validation, um, uh, understanding, whatever it is that the person is craving at that time. So you you are you are kind of talking right along in my wheelhouse here. So you know I get a little fired okay. up about about That's these fine. types of things. <laughs> It is, it is it is really it's really exciting to know that more and more ministries and more and more churches are realizing how important it is to have this because many times we will people will go see a counselor but they're not seeing a pastoral counselor they're not seeing a Christian counselor mm-hmm. so that counselor mm-hmm. is not taking their faith into consideration. And they're just telling them what um, what what our training would would explain to them is what they should do. Again, without having that additional layer of what does faith ask us to do? What does scripture call us to do uh, in that situation? Mm-hmm. Again, I am going to mute my mic and uh, pass it to <laughs> please share. That's okay. Uh, That's yes. okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Reverend Given. Amen. Um, I, I, I appreciate all the things that have been said so far, uh, Dr. Angela. Man, that's some, you got some good perspectives and some good points on that. That was, mm-hmm. that was good to, to hear and to listen there. I really enjoyed that. Um, and Pastor Diane, when you when you first started out, you you uh, made said something along the, the the vein of assuming that people want to stay married, particularly the ones that are staying in church and uh, mm-hmm. that are there fighting. And I, I really that kind of made me go, hmm. I kind of like that, um, and particularly, mm-hmm. you know, if 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 someone's married and they're having a difficult time and they're choosing to stay in church, you know, because mm-hmm. you know sometimes we can get uh, get caught up in things. And it's like, okay, I don't want anybody to see this, and so they people begin to withdraw at that point, right? And so to mm-hmm. stay in and stay in the fight, it, it's some indication that you want to be there. And so I want to respond to this in, in in two different ways. First, the importance okay. of having. Uh, marriage and single conferences, and then uh, some perspective on like content, if you will. Um, and, and the first is, I, I think it's, I think it's really important, particularly if we're coming from that assumption of people who are are having mar- who are having marital issues and are, are choosing to stay at church, assuming that those people that are, are that are sticking with it are, are wanting to be married and and wanting to do that well and wanting to do that right. It's like it's like my my thought 
thought process in that was if somebody is willing to stay in the fight, if we have parishioners in our congregations and they're willing to stay in the fight, let's have these marriage conferences and, and things like that so we can teach them how to, quote, unquote, fight well. Or, I mean, if they're going to fight for it, let's teach them how to do that well. And uh, and so mm-hmm. I, I think that the, 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 the marriage and singles conferences for that reason, among others I'm going to talk about here now, are very important. Um, we haven't had marriage conferences every year, but we have had them periodically, pretty sporadically, but periodically. And okay. there hasn't been um, one occasion where we had the where we had a, a marriage conference where the church didn't grow. Every single conference, that marriage conference that we had, there there was at least one family to stick with us at, at the church and uh, and to be a part of it. And so I, I I've I've seen it grow churches and all the statistics says that it does that anyways. Um, and then also my I, I value this so much that my wife and I apart apart from anything that we're doing at the church annually go to a marriage conference by ourselves we don't we, we hadn't told the church or anything like where it is because we like to go and be there for ourselves and so like we we see mm-hmm. this as important and we value it enough to make sure every year this is what we're doing and um some mm-hmm. of our um uh, some of our best friends are. Uh, uh, this is this is their field. This is their lane. This is their wheelhouse, and we we stay in constant contact with them to uh, brushing up on things. And so it's I I believe that it's uh, it's it's very important, and I, I think it's important for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's it's important because it it, it for the singles it teaches it teaches single people how how to be married and how to do that well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sometimes in um uh lead, leading up to marriage, you know, love you know, you remember the old saying love is blind, right? And so mm-hmm. you know, you could be excited and happy about getting married and you know, I, I give the example from time to time, uh, you know, that the that lady you're dating, man, I tell you what, she squeezes that toothpaste in the middle every single time and it's like oh isn't that cute <laughs> and uh you know it internally you hate it man you don't like it at all but it's so cute you're in love and things are wonderful and uh, uh you know it, it's not a big deal the toilet paper well you roll it from the top or the bottom it's like not that big of a deal it's it's really cute it's all wonderful uh and it, it and it really is not that big of a deal but then you get married and every day you get Get up to brush your teeth, the toothpaste has been squeezed in the middle, or mm-hmm. the toilet paper has been rolled from the top. And where it was cute, you know, five years in, that thing was grinding your mind. If anybody else did it, they'd bother you except that one person. There, it was okay if they did it, but then after they did it for two years, it's like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Can they really, you know? And so those are those are very very small things, but those are things we don't think about. On the front end, when we're in love and infatuated mm-hmm. and all as well, and so having these mm-hmm. types of conferences uh, to to talk about the real side of marriage and life, it, it's it it can be work. You know, I had a, a good friend of mine that had, who has said, you know, it it takes it takes work. Anybody that has a great marriage had to work to get there, and anybody that has uh, that that sustains that great marriage has the work to keep it that way. And, um, there, there, there is, there is a, there's a, a work to that um, daily that's happening there, and I, and I think for married people too, it, it, it uh, conferences strengthen us. It, it reminds us that uh, you know marriage isn't about us, and uh, mm-hmm. there's another person that God has called us to love, and um, and we do that. This this whole marriage thing, like I get excited about this kind of stuff here. I think this is. Uh, uh, a, a big huge thing uh, and, and I think too that one thing that that um, marriage conferences and things like that it w- one thing it helps us to do helps married people to do um, is to create a common language you know um, we we had some, mm-hmm. some people at the church that helped me to see this actually um, they were from the islands and and the wife said to me she said pastor she said my husband and I, when when we got married, we had 
two completely different languages. He would say something, and I would hear something completely different. And I would say something, or I would say something, and he would hear something completely different. And he said, she said, we had to come to the place where we built our own common new language as a family. You know, he brought mm. his family and his tradition, and I brought my family and my tradition. And that, and 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 I'm not saying either one of those or are right or wrong, but together mm-hmm. we have to create a new language. And and I think these conferences help us to create new languages within our household and a uh, new common language. And uh, and I think that is it is is very uh, very important. You know, I, I also I, I I must mention this. I think it's I think it's vitally 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 important that if we're going to do as pastors and leaders, if we're going to put on and have these uh, marriage and single conferences, it, it's important to do that from a biblical perspective. Um, and and uh, I don't want to, I'm not saying we have to omit anything else that may be helpful in it, but I think it's important for us to remember uh, what God is saying and what God has already said about marriage and trust that he knew what he was talking about when he said it and that he is most right in every situation. And so I, I think that is for those reasons, I think marriage and single conferences are of the utmost importance. And I haven't had a, a place or a space that, that I've been called to, whether locally or internationally, where I've gone to that place and the Lord had to say, the Lord hadn't said, talk about marriage, talk about marriage, talk about marriage. I believe that marriage is very, very, very important to God, and uh, we find ourselves talking about this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's a sweet spot. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important simply because even right now with the pandemic, you take a person that has been married for 30 years, and all of a sudden one of the spouses get laid off. You see them shining in front of everybody. It doesn't matter whether they're in the church or or they can be at uh, you know have a have a six figure uh, digit income or what have you, okay. And so oh look at look at look at uh, elder so and so so and so oh they can have just the best relationship that's on the block. Now the pandemic is hit, okay. And so they don't one one of the one of the um, uh, 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 spouses, whether it's the husband or wife, don't know how to be able to cope with the fact that guess what we're down to one income now. So now we hmm. see a lot of individuals that are going to, uh, you know, they're separating, they're going because they don't know how to handle it. So that's the reason why I, say I think it's very important. You don't even have to have a conference. If you just want to sit down and have like a teaching session in the ministry yeah. with just a uh, head pastor or maybe a, a, a pastor that is designated, some people operate out the fivefold ministries with the apostles, the prophets, and the pastors, and the evangelists, and the teachers, and what have you, that's fine. But if it's someone that's, uh, uh, that's uh, you know, uh, good in that area can be able to touch uh, and teach on that subject that is very, very important because I would hate to see for a relationship just to go down the drain just because a man of God may not know how to cope with the fact that he has lost his job. His wife is the breadwinner. She may be nagging him and things. get up and go get you a job. Now the relationship is going down the drain and what have you. The pastor is up preaching on Sunday morning. He's not hitting anything that the, that the people need in the pews or she is not hitting any topics that the people are going through in the pews simply because of the fact that he's not on target. So that's the reason why uh, that's very important as to what you were saying, make sure that we stay in a biblical standpoint and then making sure that our ears are open to the Holy Spirit, see what the Holy Spirit has to say so people can make, because see, God is concerned about it too. If he, if he wasn't, he would have never put it in the, in the scriptures and what have you. In First mm-hmm. Corinthians, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if the unsanctified husband is, 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 is uh, uh, if, the, if the sanctified wife is pleased to deal with the unsanctified, the Bible said don't put him out. Don't put him out of there and stuff. Keep him on in there and what have you. We have to learn how to grow beyond obstacles and circumstances. But what my thing is about it is we have a lot of Christians that are falling to divorce. We see, we have a lot of Christians, and it's not being discussed. It's not being talked about. People push it up under the rug. That's not my problem. My problem is get up here and preach and things like that and get my salary every two weeks, whether it's twenty five, thirty five hundred dollars every two weeks. When we have a concern about the people, we are doing 
the Great Commission. We're doing a Great Commission when we're healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out devils. Come on out of here. Can I get an amen on this house? We, 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 it's not, it just don't come, consist of one specific thing. We have to make sure that, and I had to learn this too, I had to learn this effectively, that God had to come in and open my eyes and my mindset to different things and would have your answer mm-hmm. how to be able to reach people. You know, you know, I can't do this right here. God, yeah, yes, you can and stuff like that. Because look what happened when the pandemic hit. A lot of the TV evangelists, now, you have to be in the spirit to be able to understand what I'm about to say. A lot of the TV evangelists, they were even caught off guard. Come on here. They were caught off guard. They didn't know. I don't mm-hmm. care if you don't like it. I'm going to tell it just like it is. They were even caught off guard. They did not know how to handle it. It took a lot of them a while to be able to go in there and grab up the but the people that already knew how to do virtual ministry, it was a piece of cake because it didn't bother me not one point because God had gave me an open mind. I'm trying to help somebody on here. God had gave me an open mind some years ago, and so when I was able to do virtual ministry first before I went to the brick and mortar, when this pandemic hit, it did not phase me. That's what I'm trying to say. So we have to be open. And so it did. It's it it it's, it kind of and some of them aged. I don't care. I'm just gonna put it like it is. Tell it just like it is. If you could look at some of them, they'd be on Facebook. Some of them have aged because they don't know how to handle this situation without coping with the twenty, thirty, forty thousand people that have been in the pews and. That's the reason why we're having this discussion as to helping leaders and pastors and clergy. Look, don't lose out on what God has given you and told you to do. The pandemic is not for you to stop just because it's a pandemic and you may don't have the 50 people in the pews. You've got to keep moving. All of us do. So I just wanted to say that we have just a few minutes left. But before we get ready to uh, end the conference, I would love for both of the speakers to be able to share um, 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 some resources with uh, the audience as to how they can be able to follow them after the conference is over with, if they want to be able to share any books that they have published, any upcoming events that they may have, any master classes that they may be uh, 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 producing or putting on or what have you, website links, social media platforms, because my thing is that when I do radio, and when I do partial TV, I don't do full TV ministry, but when I do radio uh, ministry, I always want to make sure that the radio is not about me, that the, the speakers have an opportunity and an option to be able to share. It's not just one pastor. We're all leaders to, um, 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 you know, to the body of Christ. So we can be able to people, it doesn't matter about, you know, whether they follow uh, Diane or whether they follow Reverend Gibbons, whether they follow uh, Pastor Angela or what have you and things like that, just so long as a, a something has been set in stone and they can say, okay, then we're going to go and see how effectively that we can continue to follow Pastor Gibbons in his ministry. So we're going to start with Dr. and Pastor Angela. You can be able to share um, um, how the, the audience can be able to find you after this is over with. Uh, if you know how they can be able to connect with you on any social media platforms or any books that you have published, mm-hmm. you can be able to share them and share them, share where you they can be able to find you also on a global standpoint. Mm-hmm. Well, Pastor Diane, thank you so much for for an opportunity to to not only share that information but to be a part of the Pastors and Leadership Conference for 2022. I think this is an amazing way to start off our new year and to really get the footing that we need, not only in our ministries but in our individual lives. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, As far as keeping up with me, I have tried to make it as easy as possible. Uh, For someone who's dealing with radio, and TV, if you can make it easy breezy for someone to remember, the chances are that they'll be able to find you. So if you look Mm -hmm. for Dr. Angela Chester, that's Dr. Angela Chester, dot com, as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the social media platform is, I am Dr. Angela Chester. Now, if you want to keep up with um, radio, it is facebook.com forward slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. If you'd like to keep up on Facebook for TV, it is Daily Spark 
TV official, Daily Spark TV official. But if you don't remember anything else, if you go to my website, DrAngelaChester.com, you will find all of the information that you need there, our upcoming events, where you can get the various resources that we have. And, yes, I do have resources available to you. It will also connect mm-hmm. you to Do Life Pastoral Counseling, which is the counseling services that we provide. So all of that good stuff that you need is right there at DrAngelaChester.com. Thank you again, Pastor Diane, for allowing me to share here with Pastors and Leadership Conference. Amen. Okay, Reverend Gibbons, Pastor Gibbons. Um, yes, ma'am. I, I, I want to um, echo what uh, Dr. Angela said there. I am very appreciative of the opportunity to uh, be with you guys on uh, today at the 2022 Pastors and Leaders Conference. It has, has truly been a, a blessing and, a, and an honor for me indeed, and so I, I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Um, and, and one one last kind of final and concluding thought I want to say there is, you know, that it's important. It's trust God. And um, get into some good habits, particularly when things are going well, um, because we can pull on those things uh, when times get tough. And so building good habits is mm-hmm. is a good way um, to um, be ready when tough times come. Um, follow us, uh, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, at the church is BuckheadLife.org. And so that's B-U-C-K-H-E-A-D.org. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube, and then also my my wife and I uh, do different things um, outside of the, the church community, whether it is uh, traveling statewide or internationally, and you can find out about all the things that we're doing in that regard at uh, givensfam.org, and that's givens, G-I-V-E-N-S, F-A-M.org, and um, for all the information there on the things that we're We'll be doing and the upcoming events and all of that good stuff. And so, BuckheadLife.org and um, Givens Family, gets mm-hmm. using that GivensFam.org. And so, that's us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, we would like to thank both of you all for being uh, our guests on the Pastors and Leadership Conference. And I think, uh, you know, I want to touch on that real, real briefly about the fast. I think everybody's on the fast at the first of the year. And so, I think it's just uh, such a, uh, a wonderful uh experience um, also as a relationship um, where you can be able to communicate with God and, and God, you know, uh, can re- communicate back with you as well, whether you're on the fast or not. But um, I, I think I heard someone bring that up, and so I just wanted to also add and piggyback on that as well. So uh, for the ones that uh, um, had questions and what have you, I'm sorry that we were not able to be able to get to your concerns on this afternoon. but. Hopefully, um, once we publish the link and what have you, you can be able to go back and retrieve the information <clears throat> that you need in regards to the topics um, that we discussed. We also wanted to share that the music that we're playing, these are not our rights. We do not own the rights to these uh, songs and uh, music that has been playing in the background. They are gospel artists that uh, that we use on our radio broadcasts. Um, and so... Um, just want to be able to make mention of that. So, again, once again, we thank everyone for tuning in with us um, on this evening for this Pastors and Leadership Conference. And, of course, um, thank you so much for our leaders for being a part. And so everyone have a blessed night. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.